Hi, you're listening to Redneck Theology, a program providing a common sense look at Christianity. I'm your host, Bill Witte. Questions or comments may be emailed to redneck-theology at gmail.com. Now, on with the broadcast. All of us at one time have probably heard someone say, Don't judge me. You're not supposed to judge. How true is that statement? Today I'll address a topic I might borrow a bit from Shakespeare. To judge or not to judge? That is the question. I'd like to start off a couple of scriptures. In John 7th chapter and 24th verse it says, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Then in the book of Romans, the 14th chapter and the 13th verse, we read, Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Now I just read two scriptures which seem at odds with each other. The first contains the words of Jesus telling us to judge. The second urges us not to judge, but then says to judge that no one puts a stumbling block in his brother's way. No wonder people so often disagree if we do wrong in passing judgment. More often than not, when I hear someone saying, don't judge me, or you're not supposed to judge, the person speaking just heard something which convicted them of wrongdoing, or at least the possibility they might be in error. The only times I remember someone giving such a warning without feeling personal conviction about a situation all deal with a teaching that someone received about judging or a concern that they did wrong in exercising a judgment. Scripture does actually tell us to judge. The passage I read at the beginning said to use righteous judgment. In the 20th chapter of Luke, Jesus got after people for not judging what was right. In 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter and the 2nd verse, tells us the saints will judge the world. The next verse says we will judge angels. The very next verse tells us to set up the least esteemed as judges in the church. We're told in the 11th chapter to judge ourselves. And in the 14th chapter, we're told to let two or three of the prophets speak and let another judge. Clearly, God directs us to administer judgment in some circumstances. The key to understanding whether to judge or not deals with definition and purpose. The word krino, which we translate into English as judge, may refer to a person to properly distinguish, decide either mentally or judicially, or by implication to try, condemn, punish, avenge, conclude, damn, decree, determine, esteem, judge, go to the law, sue at the law, ordain, call in question, sentence, or even to think. Directions to judge call upon us to exercise wisdom, righteousness, and consideration of our own weaknesses. We must judge every day in the sense we must make decisions. Daily living dictates a need to discern the best choices in light of what Scripture directs as correct for us. We judge what programs to watch, movies to see, food to eat, places to go, people we associate with, occupations to pursue, schools to attend, music we listen to, places to live, clothes to wear, people to trust, and even what church we attend and what Bible we read. People decide or judge if they believe in God or not. Even those who say they believe in Him judge to read His Word or not. Those reading it judge to accept it as a whole or what parts of it they choose to apply. Most people who object to other people making judgment calls on a biblical basis do so when they feel threatened at some level. Christians sharing their beliefs often find themselves accused of judging when applying or quoting scripture. The history of folks using the Bible to condemn people perpetuates the common assumption that people quoting scripture must intend to condemn those with the passages that they're directing at them. God calls us to righteous judgment, not self-righteousness. Unfortunately, self-righteous zealots still exist 
and they still use scripture as they point out the faults and wrongs of others while trying to elevate themselves. Self-righteousness exhibits arrogance and immaturity, not superiority. The word cautions us when we judge to consider the attitude we project. The passage which warns us about this, oddly enough, is the same passage that most often is heard from those who are objecting to being judged. When used as a reason not to judge, only one verse of the passage, however, is generally used. In Matthew, the, ch the seventh chapter, first verse, the Bible says, Judge not, that ye be not judged. Most often we only hear the Bible says, Judge not. The next verse bears reading also. Matthew, the seventh chapter, and the second verse goes on to say, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye met, it shall be measured to you again. The passage goes on from there to question the wisdom of trying to remove a speck from another person's eye when you can't clearly see yourself. The main point tells us the standard we use to judge another person and or their circumstances will be used in judging us. The message in no way forbids judging, or suggests we shouldn't judge. It simply states, if we could live without judging, we would not be judged. Since we can and will judge situations, circumstances, actions, and even people, we must be aware of the guidelines we use, and know the same guidelines apply to us. If we keep in mind why and how we judge, we may find ourselves adjusting our attitudes and words. We need to call sin, sin. We need to point out wrong and direct people to God. We also must follow the scriptural example often called the golden rule by judging the way we want others to judge us. That's our program for today. I'm Bill Witte thanking you for listening to Redneck Theology. Your questions or comments may be emailed to redneckTheology at gmail.com. Please join me again for more Redneck Theology.